Welcome back. This is activity 2.1 in Who Doesn't Love Puppies? Let's get started. In the previous simulation, your probability model was based on experimental probabilities. In some cases, this is the only method of construction a probability model, for example, oh, of constructing your probability model. For example, in an earlier lesson, you determined the experimental probabilities of a cup landing on its top, bottom, or side when it was tossed. It would be difficult or impossible to determine the theoretical probabilities for the cup toss. However, it is possible to determine the theoretical probability, this is what we're focusing on today, the theoretical probability for a litter of three puppies being born female or being three females. If you don't know what a litter of puppies is, a litter is just a group of puppies that are born together. That is all. One method to calculate the theoretical probability for a litter of puppies being female is to list all of the possible outcomes for a litter of three puppies. You can then determine how many of those outcomes include three females. So looking at number one at the bottom, Carl says, I think that the probability of a litter of puppies being three females is one out of three because there is only one outcome that has all three puppies being female. And there are only two other outcomes. But Jermaine says, nah, I don't think that's correct. I think that the probability is much lower since there are many combinations of males and females in a litter of three puppies. Who is correct? Explain your reasoning. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to think about who do you agree with? Who do you think is correct or at least on the right track? Do you think it is Carl? or do you think it is germane? I want you to take one minute and one minute only to discuss this with the people around you or yourself or Casper the Friendly Ghost. One minute, pause here. Alrighty, I'm so glad you guys got that great discussion in. I'm not gonna answer this now, we're gonna move forward and then we're gonna come back to this to see who is on the right track. All right, number two, it says, List all of the possible outcomes for having three puppies in a litter using F to represent females and M to represent males. So let's go ahead and do this. And you can follow along with me. These notes are not hard to take at all. So let's think about these three puppies being born, okay? So one outcome I know can look like this. F, F, F to represent what, our first baby being a puppy or baby girl, the second puppy being a baby girl, and the third puppy being a baby girl. Or let me not mix up my words, female, excuse me, female, right? But also it could look like this. What if I have a girl, female, sorry, female, female, and then the last puppy comes out a male. That could happen. It could also happen to where my first born is female, my second born is male, and then my last one is female. Or let's keep going. I could also have a male being born first and then two females. I could also have a male born first, a female, and then another male. Okay, you guys see where I'm going with this? My first puppy born could also be a male. The second born puppy could be a male. And then the last one be a female. There's more. I could also have male, 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 a litter of all males, and I'm missing one. Oh, right, where my first baby can be born female, but then she's got two brothers just like me. All righty, so there are all of our combinations. Count up how many. There are eight. Let's answer question three and then we will come back to our probability table. So number three says, what does the outcome MFF represent? So the way that we just said it, think about what that might represent. Well, the first baby looks like it was born male. So the first puppy, uh-oh, the first puppy was male. And the second and third puppy were what? Female. 
That is what that represents. All right, so now let's put this in a table. It says complete the probability model using all possible outcomes. So all of the possible outcomes, we counted there were eight. So all of these I know needs to be out of eight. Eight possible outcomes, eight possible outcomes, eight possible outcomes. And now let's count up how many of these we have. So the outcomes that included zero females, let's go and highlight that. Zero females was this one right here my male, male, males, and it doesn't look like there were any others that did not include females. So I know that that probability is one out of eight. And that looks like an R, one. Why does it keep doing that? Okay, not sure. All right, and one female, let's look at this. Mm, here's one that includes one female. Get my highlighter, one female. This one includes one female and nope, all of, oh, forgot one. This one includes one female. So it looks like there are only but three that include one female. Let's see how many include two females. Let's get a different color. So male, female, 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 male, female, male, female. It looks like another three are included in that probability. So two females, there are three out of eight total outcomes and all three females, well, as you can see, there's only one left. So that is one out of eight is that probability. And there's our probability model. So now what is the theoretical probability that a litter of three puppies is comprised of three females? Well, we can find that from our probability table. Go ahead and write that answer. the probability of those puppies being all female is one out of eight. And now before we move forward, let's go ahead and answer that question. So who was more correct? Was it Carl or was it Jermaine? Hopefully you said Jermaine because just as we found out, just she said exactly what we found out, right? There are a lot more combinations than just one, two, three outcomes, like Carl said. He was not on the right track. Jermaine is on the right track because she saw and could see that there are many different ways or combinations of the ways the puppies can be born um, that also make one outcome more likely than the other. Alrighty. So let's just go ahead and highlight that, actually. It was Jermaine. She's more correct. He or she. I don't know could be either. All right, now let's continue because we're talking about tree diagrams in this lesson. All right, let's go ahead and read. It says, another method of determining the theoretical probability of an event is to construct a tree diagram. Get your highlighters ready, your underlining, your circling. Get ready because we're marking this up. A tree diagram, say tree diagram, I hope you said it, illustrates the possible outcomes of a given situation please go ahead and underline that a tree diagram illustrates the possible outcomes of a given situation tree diagrams can be constructed vertically or horizontally you can construct a tree diagram to show all possible outcomes for a litter of three puppies also let's go ahead and read this note right here as well it says a tree diagram has two main parts the branches and the ends an outcome of each event is written at the end of each branch. So now let's look at this worked example to see exactly how this tree diagram is written. Now, before I continue, I want you to, by yourself or with a partner or a group around you, to look at this worked example, annotate it to understand how this tree diagram was constructed, uh, look and see how it makes sense, and then we're gonna come back and answer the following question. So set a timer for two minutes to look at this worked example, annotate it, talk about it, make it make sense, and then we're gonna continue. All right, two minutes on the clock, pause here. All righty, so you should have annotated your worked example on your own, but what I want you to notice is that just like this little note off to the side said, the tree diagram is made up of two main parts, the branches and the ends, so notice that the branches show each of the outcomes 
or the different possibilities of what your puppy's going to be born, right? So at the end of the branch is the outcome. So they got two branches for our possible outcomes. And then at the end of each branch is what the outcome actually is. And then notice off to the left, they've got the events listed for you. So the first row is the first event, okay? The first baby being born can either be male or female. And then another event happens. Well, the second puppy is born. That can either be male or female, right? Depending on which one is born in the first event will determine your path on the tree diagram. And then your third event happens, right? And there you're determining again, okay? Male or female from whatever our previous outcome was, all right? And this tree diagram just lists all of the possible outcomes so that you can total them up at the end and then determine your probability, real simple. So now let's continue. Number six says, how would this tree diagram change if you were trying to determine the possible outcomes for a litter of four puppies? Now we're not gonna answer this together because I do wanna give you some time to work and think on your own. So I want you to also answer number seven on your own. It says, how does the tree diagram in the worked example compare to the list you made in question number two? Remember question number two is here. So how does the tree diagram compare to this list right here? I want you to answer the, those two questions. Ooh, also number eight, and then we'll talk about the rest. So number eight says, circle the outcomes of a litter of three puppies that are all female on the tree diagram shown. So at this time, set your timer for about three minutes, three minutes max, and you're answering questions six, seven, and eight on your own. Pause here. All righty, now that you've had time to work, let's answer these questions. So number six, how would the tree diagram change if you were determining four, excuse me, determining possible outcomes for four, a litter of four puppies, excuse me. So I just simply said, and you should have said something similar, the tree diagram would show another event by creating more branches and ends at the bottom of the tree diagram. And of course, that would represent a fourth puppy being born. For number six, I mean seven, how does the tree diagram in the worked example compare to your list? Well, the outcomes show the same results, but the tree diagram is more visual, it's more organized, and for some, but not everyone, it's a little easier to understand. And if it's not easy to understand now, it is okay. You're going to be exposed to it a lot more, so you'll be able to get that practice understanding and drawing those tree diagrams already. And if you had something similar or something different, it is all good because there is not one and only one correct answer for number seven. And for number eight, it says circle the outcomes or outcome of a litter of three puppies that are all females. So what that would look like is my first puppy being born female, my second puppy being born female, and my third puppy being born female. And that's what that outcome would look like. All righty, let's continue. Now that you know how to do number eight, let's look at number nine. It says, circle the outcome of a litter of three puppies in which two of the puppies are females in the tree diagram shown. So you're circling, again, the outcomes where you've got two female puppies in those results. And then number 10, circle the outcome, male, male, female, meaning those puppies that are born first are both males and the last one is a female. What would that look like? Okay, I'm going to pause this here. I want you to take exactly two minutes and no more time than that. Two minutes to complete questions nine and 10. Two minutes. Pause here. Alrighty, let's compare answers. So for number nine, you had to circle the outcomes that show two female puppies being born. So I circled the result male, female, female. Then I went over to where we started with female. I circled female, male, female. And I circled female, female, male. And that is three of those, those results that show two females being born. For number 10, it says circle the outcome, male, male, female, and there it is right there. Starting with male, my second event was male, 
and my third outcome was female. All right, now let's go to this probability model. So let's complete the probability model shown with the information from the tree diagrams. So one easy way to identify the outcomes or total outcomes from your tree diagram is to count the ends at the bottom. So if we look at the bottom, I know that there are going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total outcomes, just like we predicted with that list. And then now you're going to fill this in on your own, determining the outcomes of zero females being born, one female being born, two females, and three females being born. And we kind of already did two of those for you. I'm sorry, one of those. All right, at this time, go ahead and take one minute, one minute max, because honestly, this shouldn't take long. Oh, no, hmm, I'll help y'all. Two minutes, two minutes max. Pause here to go ahead and complete question 11. Two minutes max, pause here. All right, let's compare our work. So for number 11, you should have gotten one eighth for zero females, three eighths for one female, three eighths for two females, and one eighth for three females, based off of your tree diagram. And if you need an example of how I did this, I'll go over in, in orange or yellow to show you. So for example, I'll use one female as an example. If I want to determine which ones have only one female outcome, well, I know that I'm going to start with a male, and then I'm going to find two other options that have a male and a female option. So if I'm starting on the male side, I see male, male, and I see female as the last puppy. That's one. Then I can go the male, female, male route because in the middle, there's one female puppy. And then also, what if my puppy starts or what if my first puppy is female? Then I know the other two will need to be male to show one female outcome. And so that is three out of eight possible outcomes. All righty, let's continue. So number 12, it says, is there a difference in the theoretical probability of each outcome between the list of outcomes you wrote and the tree diagram you analyzed? Well, let's look at it. Here's our probability model that we got from our tree diagram. And then here's our probability model that we did when we wrote our list. Do you see a difference? The answer is no, there is no difference. There is no difference because the list of possibilities that I create and the tree diagram all show all possible outcomes. So the probabilities are going to be the same. So we'll just write no, and then you can summarize in your own words, explain. Alrighty, so this concludes this activity, activity 2.1. I hope you learned something about tree diagrams and I will see you in the next video. Awesome job today.